Our first model for analyzing financial ratios is DuPont analysis. It determines the factors that affect return on equity financial ratio by dividing it into its components using the accounting identity. The objective of doing this is that the ROE doesn't have a clear trend between periods. Therefore, we identify its components and see how they affect the ratio. For example, a three component return on equity will be calculated as follows. We start with the calculation of return on equity, which is equal to net income divided by average shareholders equity. We then multiply this by net sales divided by net sales, which doesn't change the result. But what we do with this is that we combine numerators and denominators and we have that return on equity is equal to net income divided by net sales multiplied by net sales divided by average shareholders equity. So, next we do it again. We multiply what we just combined by total assets divided by total assets so that we don't alter the result and combine. So we have that our last result is that return on equity is equal to net income divided by net sales multiplied by net sales divided by total assets multiplied by total assets divided by shareholders equity. As we can see, these three divisions are financial ratios we've already calculated. So another way of looking at the return on equity ratio, it is that it is equal to the net profit margin multiplied by the total assets turnover multiplied by the equity multiplier or financial leverage as it is common known. So let's look at them in our practical example click again into the Excel icon and here we have the DuPont analysis which is a decomposition of the ROE for Apple. Data sources are the ones that we've described before because we are using data from financial statements and as you can see we, have, we can do a two component ROE, a three component which I just described you in our, in our previous slides. We can also do it a five component ROE and we can also analyze return on assets and to identify its components by doing actually the same process, doing a two component ROE and a five component ROA. But now we're going to only analyze the three component ROE, which is actually the most commonly used. Again, we're doing it for three consecutive years and what we need to measure here are the changes between these years. So this is the change between 2013 and 2014 and then from 2012 to 2013. So first we have the net profit margin. We've already calculated this in our profitability analysis. So if we go into our profitability analysis tab, we find that it's our net profit margin for Apple. Then we have our total assets turnover. This ratio we've already calculated it in our investment analysis, that if we go into our investment analysis tab, Again, we have our total assets turnover ratio. And finally, we have the equity multiplier or financial leverage, and we've calculated it in the solvency analysis. Again, if we go into the solvency analysis, we have our equity multiplier financial leverage. And if we multiply this, the net profit margin, by the total asset turnover by the equity multiplier, we get the return on equity ratio. So, the importance of this is to see that, for example, from 2013 to 2014, we saw that the return on equity was higher than previous, and then if we compare the return on equity between 2013 and 2013, we see that it was lower. So. Here is a growth rate between 2013 and 2014 and the growth rate from 2012 and 2013. And what was the main reason for this to happen? So, for example, if we look at 2013 and 2014, we see that the reason for the return on equity to change from a, let's call it a negative trend, into a positive trend was the equity multiplier, which changed considerably from current period. So as we can see, the objective of doing the ROE decomposition is to understand which are the factors that affected the change and trend.